Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Sheen and I'm the Wellness Director at the Pilates Yoga Loft located in St. Augustine, Florida. You can follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Pilates Yoga Loft or you can check out our website which is PilatesYogaLoft.com. Today I'm going to be showing some demonstrations of movement on how we can work on the fascia in our bodies using the foam roller. So we're going to talk a little bit about the educational part of it and we're also going to be actually physically doing some of the fascia work as well. So today the fascia meets the foam roller. So what is fascia? A lot of people say fascia, what's that? So fascia is this big continuous and completely connected piece of tissue that's in our entire body and it looks and acts differently depending on where it is. So if the fascia located in the brain to the fascia located in the quad, it looks a little different. But fascia in general is a big network of connective tissue that supports the body on so many different levels. So I wanna talk a little bit more about fascia, but I also wanna talk a little bit about foam rolling. So I'm gonna grab my foam roller over here and I wanna talk about how does foam rolling help your fascia? Foam rolling is really also called myofascial release, and it's the application of pressure to eliminate scar tissue and soft tissue and adhesions in the body. It loosens up, it frees up the fascia to create more peace and more movement and makes the muscles more pliable when we apply myofascial release and foam rolling to our practices. It has lots of wonderful benefits that you'll see as we go forward in this class. So beneath the skin. So beneath the skin, there is a layer of fatty tissue that provides the body with necessary insulation, blood and lymphatic flow, and energy storage. And just beneath that is the fascia in your body. Some fun fascia facts. So when I talk about fascia, I like to give a couple different examples. So the first example and kind of a mind in your a visual for your mind is think of fascia as this soft skeleton in your entire body that even anchors the tissues and the organs. Another example I give in class is that I take my fist as if this were my muscle and I take my hand, my opposite hand over heel and I wiggle it. And this is gonna be the fascia. And I want you to think about saran wrap, that plastic saran wrap because it gets all jammed up. It's very hard to come undone. So when we work the foam roller to the muscle and we start to work on loosening up that fascia, it creates that flexibility, length and extension, and your body will have more mobility and it won't have any pain or discomfort. So the importance of fascia, understanding fascia's function in the anatomy of the body is really crucial for you to understand how yoga and foam rolling create this positive change. So we're gonna talk briefly about that now. So we have different fascia and muscle tissues in the body. We have two, one is called superficial and deep fascia. So we're gonna to touch base on that in a second. And then we have these three. We have epimyosin, paramyosin, and endomyosin. I chose this picture because it, to me it was just fascinating when I looked at it. And in this picture, you're really gonna see the tendon, the deep fascia, the superficial fascia, the skeletal muscle, all oh, amazing stuff in our bodies. And then we can see the veins and the nerves and how the fascia work all within the insides of our bodies. So epimyosin, every muscle as a whole is wrapped in a sleeve of fascia called epimyosin. Next up, we have paramyosin. Each muscle is wrapped in its own layer of fascia called paramyosin. So very much layers of this beautiful um, work in our bodies. Endomyosin. Each individual muscle cell has its own layer of fascia called endomyosin. So even the muscle cell. So remember, easy way to remember, is just remember that fascia is, speci is a specialized system of our bodies. 
and the appearance is similar to a spider web. So I chose this picture here um, to share with you because I don't want you to just think about this spider web. I want you to think about this beautiful, lots of colors and vibrant and healthy looking um, type, looking like um, a spider web that's really deeply woven in every muscle, bone, nerve, vein, as well as our inner organ. So I want you to think of it as this beautiful spider web with inside your body. So let's talk about the other two layers that I was sharing with you. The next one is our superficial fascia, and that's the top layer. So the superficial um, fascia is thin, it's fibrous, and it's highly lactistic, movable, um, and it's classified typically as the loose connective tissue in the body. So the loose connective tissue in the body is our superficial fascia. Then we have our deep fascia. The deep fascia is rich and it's sensory receptors that are sensitive to things like pressure and movement. This is what you're gonna feel when we incorporate the foam roller. So what is foam rolling? Foam rolling is this amazing tool that I love to use during my classes. At the Pilates Yoga Loft, we offer weekly classes in foam rolling. I love to educate all of my students about the benefits of foam rolling. So today is something, this conversation I'm having with you today is something that I just spoke with my teacher, my students that are becoming teachers now in yoga during my teacher training certification. And we talked about fascia and how to incorporate the foam rollers. And they says, well, what really, what's the benefit of foam rolling? Well, maybe you don't have the income to go get a massage a couple times a week, even though it would be nice. And massages are important, but this is a great way to just really move through. And the foam roller really helps us to move through um, the muscles and work on the fascia. So it helps with just pain and lots of great things we'll get to. But we're really gonna take the foam roller to the body to, and then to the ground and we're gonna take movements and I'm gonna demonstrate that for you, um, how we're gonna use the foam roller today. So benefit is great to relieve pain. So we're now gonna talk about foam rolling before yoga, okay? So what's the, so a lot of people use foam rollers when they're sore and they're tight, right? And that's, they'll go, oh, I'm tight. And somebody might say to them, go ahead and grab one of the foam rollers and roll out. But I really recommend students to foam roll prior to Pilates and yoga. Um, and I like to always give the example of years ago when I was a professional dancer, a lot of our teachers would just say, push foam rollers over to our, our direction and they would move on and they would say, roll out for 15, 20 minutes and then come to the bar for class. And a lot of us were kind of like, mm, we don't really want to foam roll. And the more that I did it really honestly, the more I appreciated it because I personally felt the benefits. So once it came to me and once it started making me feel better is when really I got passionate about learning more and sharing it with others. And the first thing I noticed the days that I foam rolled versus the days I didn't where I had so much more flexibility. My body was warmed up way faster. I was able to go into movements deeper at a much faster rate than when I didn't foam roll. So um, flexibility and extension and just movement in general it's a little bit easier when you foam roll before your um, Pilates and yoga class. And make sure too that um, you understand that it's just a practice like anything else. Take your time and the more you do it, the easier it'll come. And I really encourage everybody to keep it, to make it serious and to really start purchase a foam roller, bring it with you and allow yourself to have extra time um, before and after your class to incorporate your foam, your foam rolling. So foam rolling after yoga. So foam rolling after yoga is crucial too for a few reasons. So number one, a lot of us are sore the next day after vigorous say vinyasa class or powers Pilates class doing our 100s. So when we incorporate the foam roller after class, it does a couple things. It makes us come back the next day to class because we're not as sore. Um, so you'll notice more mobility and your flexibility will last longer. 
Um, another great thing, it gets rid of cellulite. So foam rolling after class will definitely get you in the um, right onto your mat the next day, not feeling as tight and sore. Um, it gets rid of all that and eliminates that. So definitely benefits to foam rolling before and foam rolling after. So healthier fascia function. Foam rolling can help to restore the lacticity in the fascia. When you're inactive, the tissue can become tight and self-myofascial release may help to stretch it out. The rolling motion of the foam roller may allow it to become more subtle, it aids in healing, restores, it restores its ability to move with more fluidity, and really overall, at the end of foam rolling, and we're gonna talk about how it doesn't always feel good when you're doing it, but afterwards, you just feel better. And doesn't everybody wanna feel better? So next up, we're gonna talk about what foam roller should I use? And this one, I get asked a lot. I actually had a couple students ask me today during classes, um, what foam roller? You know, I really loved Wednesday's foam rolling class, and are you gonna add more of them on the schedule? And and what foam roller should I use? And these are really good questions. So you at home right now, I know you're probably were wondering that, so I'm gonna address that. What foam roller do I love? Well, I love this company I'm about to share, but I'm gonna say one thing. There are so many foam rollers out there on the market. Big ones, small ones, different shapes, um, ridges and bumps to firm and to super firm and to super light, and I could go on and on. But the best foam roller out on the market in my eyes is called OPTP, so OPTP. And one of the reasons why I love this company is because I work with a lot of um, doctors in physical therapy, and this is what they use. And that was my first experience with this brand of foam rolling, and I love them. These are the ones that are at my studio. I don't travel around when I teach within the community. Um, so I do notice that everybody in you know different studios and different communities have different types of foam rollers, but these are my favorite and here's why. Number one, I think they're very affordable. They're around $30. They're high quality and professionals use them. So OPTP. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the firmness. So in this picture here, we have the pink one, which is the softest in firmness. And then we have the green one, and the green is the medium in firmness. And then we have, I'm not demonstrating here, but we have the, showing it here, but we have the blue one, which is the highest level that I go with, with OPTP. So now that you know what foam roller to use, I wanna talk a little bit about benefits of foam rolling is better with a softer foam roller than a harder one. Okay? When it's too hard, you can barely get in there and it causes too much pain and that's not what we're looking for. So to get into that super fascia, uh, superficial fascia, you don't need to roll very heavy or deep. To get into the deep fascia, you need to press a little bit more. I recommend starting off with the pink one and then working your way up to the green one. You'll stay with the pink one for quite a while and you could stay with them for stay with that one forever, but I'll notice my students once they start um, using the foam roller more often in classes and at home, then they actually um, work their way up to the green one. So if you haven't foam roll for a while and you're new to this, um, I would recommend ordering the pink one at OPTP.com. So important things to keep in mind as you foam roll. So it's just like anything. So at home right now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to set your phone timer to remind you to foam roll and maybe put your yoga and your foam rolling session in your calendar so that you keep yourself accountable. So I know a lot of you subscribe to our, all of our amazing pre-recorded -re -pre classes and you know, it's great that you have that, but are you really taking time to use all of these great resources that you have? So put it in your calendar, take time for your self-care, you got this, I'm here to encourage you as much as I possibly can, and I'm gonna tell you to start foam rolling. So we do have um, pre-recorded foam rolling classes, entire classes um, for you, so hopefully um, you'll appreciate some of them. But one thing I wanna, three things I wanna talk about now is what not to do when you're foam rolling, okay? So I'm educating you now so that you can really um, great, get the best benefits from it. So number one is never roll behind or on the joint. 
My first yoga teacher training, me and my husband traveled abroad to Greece. Um, and Tim and V were our teachers. And she told us during our first 200 hour, never roll on or behind the joint. And she was so right. The more education I got, that is a big no-no. So if you're rolling out your calf muscle, you don't want to roll behind the knee. So you want to be very mindful that you're not rolling on or behind a joint. Next is you never roll fast pace, back and forth motion. So I noticed these two things that happen there. Number one is... You feel rushed. You grab your foam roller and you just start rolling. You want to just get this aggression out of your body. That's not recommended. Grab your foam roller, come to your mat, take a few deep breaths and ground in. Breathe, breathe, breathe. And then start to foam roll. So you'll notice if you ground down into your mat first and find stillness and then incorporate the foam roller, you'll be good to go. Also, we want to make sure that the movement is gliding and is easy and beautiful. There will be some trigger areas, and I'm going to talk about that as I demonstrate. But don't go back and forth too quick or too high-paced. Next up, you never want to roll to the point where you are sore. We're trying to get rid of the muscles and being sore and the tightness in the body. So I like to tell people, especially before they foam roll, that this isn't gonna feel like an aromatherapy massage, okay? It's important, but it's not gonna necessarily feel great. It is gonna be somewhat painful. Intense to moderate discomfort, but never pain. So if you're feeling something that's just is at the point where you can't take a full breath, or it's over overwhelming pain, then please stop, take a couple breaths, go back into it and see if the body has loosened up a little bit. But take it slow, don't roll on or behind a joint, um, and just move through it. It'll be intense, but never too, too painful. Does foam rolling hurt? So yes, it can be a little bit of pain. So you should expect a little bit of pain, and that's normal. When you are applying pressure directly to tight or sore muscles, it should be a good hurt, but never an unbearable hurt. It will be uncomfortable, but the more that you foam roll, the better it will get. So keep in mind after your foam rolling session, the pain that you had prior should feel a little bit better. Set a phone timer. So we'll talk about setting a phone timer. So at home with your home practice, you definitely want to set a phone timer. It really helps. Sometimes I'll look at the clock and I'll be like, wow, it's you know, eight o'clock and I was supposed to do my Pilates class at seven and I have this and I have that. And you just get so consumed with the hecticness of life that you just don't take enough time for yourself and for your practice and for your health and wellness. So set your phone timers and put your classes and also your phone rolling in your calendar. But setting a phone timer is crucial for a couple reasons. So the first reason that I want to talk about is that we don't want to foam roll the right quad for three minutes and then get distracted or overwhelmed and roll the left quad for a minute. So when you're at the studio, your instructors are really keeping track of the time. But sometimes when you're a student and you're practicing more at home like you are today, you might not be even. So we really want to set a phone timer for that. If you're brand new to yoga, brand new to foam rolling, brand new to Pilates, never have done any of this before, we start off slow. So we're gonna start off with that pink firmness in foam rolling, the softest one, and we're gonna set a foam timer for a minute. So we're only gonna roll out that area of the body for a minute. And I do this a lot in my classes as well. If you're someone that has already been educated on foam rolling and you just wanna learn more and you're starting to see the improvement, so you wanna educate yourself more to grow more, that's fantastic too. I would recommend the green foam roller as you go, and then you can start working three to five minutes in the target area um, that you're working. So there's six fascia areas to foam rolling. We have the quadriceps, which are the quads at the top of the body, right here. We have our hamstrings in the back. So hamstrings, they are so tight on us. So if I had 10 students in my class right now and I said to my students, um, who has tight hamstrings today? 
five or more would um, raise their hands. So if you have tight hamstrings, you're gonna love foam rolling and working through the fascia of the body because you're definitely gonna find yourself to be able to, over time, go deeper in your postures such as Dandasana. Staff pose. Calves. So our feet and ankles take the brunt of our weight all day long and our calf muscles can be really tight. Maybe you're a runner, maybe you play tennis, um, just practicing yoga and Pilates or walking. A lot of my clients that live in the city, their, their calves are really tight. So we wanna take time to roll out the calves. We have our IT band. So our IT band runs on the side of the leg, runs down the side of the leg. And I like to tell everybody that this primarily is all fascia. We have the big muscle of the quad in the front, and then we have our hamstring in the back, and the connective tissue wraps around with the tendons and the ligaments to connect these. So there's more fascia on the side of the leg. Um, so that area can be definitely more intense when we're foam rolling. The calves, you'll notice and you'll feel, but it's a bigger muscle too. But this area in here can be a little sensitive. So your IT bands are another great area that we're gonna roll. Your traps, so your shoulders. We carry a lot of stretch, stress in our shoulders. We can be sore, we can be tight. Um, I love taking time to roll out my shoulders. When I roll out my shoulders, I just, not only do I have more mobility, but I feel like my heart's shining open more and my heart chakra is open and I just feel more positive in my mindset too. So I absolutely love foam rolling out my shoulders. Um, one that I missed was the glutes. So the glutes are, I, like, I know I have my top six. Um, my, the glutes are the biggest muscle in your body. So when you roll out your glutes, it's key. Um, here's a couple reasons why. I have a lot of people that will come to me with hip pain, lower back pain, their hamstrings are super tight and they don't know why, they're not talking about their glutes and your glutes are the biggest muscle in your body. So there's also this muscle deep behind and it's called your piriformis muscle. So we actually want to get into the fascia and into that piriformis muscle. If we can work on that, we can loosen up things more from the bottom up and really have more mobility in the hips less lower back pain, hamstrings aren't gonna be sore. So there's a lot of great benefits um, from rolling out your glutes. If you've ever gone to get a massage, maybe your massage therapist has actually even used the elbow to get into that area. So it can be challenging, but the foam roller is a great tool and a great prop to use um, to work on that myofascial release within your glutes. All right, guys. So I'm excited. I shared with you a little bit about the benefits and how to go about it and some contradictions, what not to do. Um, but now I'm going to actually um, give a little demonstration. So we're going to grab our foam roller and we're going to find our yoga mat. So if you want to pause at home and go ahead and grab your foam roller and your yoga mat, go for it. If not, if you're ready to move with us, we'll get started. So we're gonna come onto our mats. And the first thing that I recommend doing so that we don't go too fast or too quick is to ground in and ground down. So we're gonna connect. So I had a busy, long day, so I'm excited to foam roll to end my day today. Um, it'll, I won't be as sore tomorrow and I'll feel nice and relaxed before I go home. So I'm gonna ground in and I'm gonna connect my sits bones to the earth here. And I'm just gonna observe the body and see how I feel. I always feel better when I immediately sit on my mat. It makes my heart smile. So we're gonna work on some pranayama breath and pranayama is just breathing in yoga. That's what we call breath work, pranayama work. And we're gonna work on an exercise called your three part breath. So your three part breath has to do with your belly, your ribs and your chest and shoulders. So it's almost like filling up this glass of water and then as we drink the glass of water, our shoulders and chest and our ribs and our belly will come backwards. So first just take some, just a few natural breaths here on your own. And once you start to connect to your breath, We'll start to incorporate 
that three part breath. So I want you to feel that belly extend out up through the ribs, up through the chest and shoulders. And then exhale as that floats down softly and gracefully. Let's also work on the Ujjayi breath, which is the, um, it's also called the ocean's breath. It's this breath that we create in the back of the throat. So we're going to go ahead and inhale, three part breath up for four counts. And then we're gonna exhale the breath out for eight. I will say that the breath is a little different in yoga and in Pilates. We are practicing a little bit more yoga today. So I want you to inhale through your nose and exhale out through your nose because in Pilates, we inhale through our nose and out through our mouth. So focus on the nose and focus on the throat here, keeping the mouth closed. We'll take a few rounds, inhaling for four, exhaling out for eight. Once we feel a little bit more settled in, we'll go ahead and wiggle our eyes back open and we'll take a nice deep breath. Let's go ahead and inhale, inhale the arms all the way up for me here, bringing our hands into prayer in the Anjali Mudra and we'll come right down towards our heart center. And we'll pause here, giving gratitude for education and learning more about self-care and learning how to incorporate the foam roller now within our practice. So I'm gonna show you a few movements that I like to do. Um, we actually have classes that we will foam roll the fascia, the six areas, but we incorporate the foam roller in our classes as a prop, almost like restorative yoga, we use a bolster. So um, I love foam rollers. So I like to, like to play with them and dance with them as much as I can too, and then get into the fascia. So before I get started, I like to start my students to find connection with this in a joyful way in the beginning to create more space and stretch a little bit before we go into the foam rolling for the myofascial release. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna extend my right arm out to the side. I'm gonna take a nice inhale, and then I'm gonna exhale and I'm gonna lean all the way over. I'm gonna really root down into that right hip, opening up through my shoulders and chest, dropping them shoulders down and back. Maybe spreading the collarbone wide. And then I'm gonna inhale up nice and slow. I'm gonna take that over to the other side. Take a nice inhalation with the left arm. And then exhale, take it all the way over, really rooting down into that left hip, pulling that shoulder down and back. Take your drishti or your gaze upward, finding space in your throat, into your throat chakra. And then we'll go ahead and we'll release nice and slow. I like to take wide-legged child's pose. So we're gonna talk about wide-legged child's pose. So we'll bring our feet in and underneath of us here, and we'll come up to my knees, and our toes are gonna to come together, and my knees are gonna go out to the side. And then from here, I'm gonna connect my hands to the foam roller, take a nice inhalation. Breath is important. Go back to that Ujjayi breath. And then exhale as you roll all the way forward, really connecting to the foam roller and creating length into the body. Stay here for two breaths. And then nice and slow, we're gonna come all the way back. Let's show you one more stretch that you could do with the foam roller here as a prop. So next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into wide-legged um, straddle, right-legged stance, sitting on our glutes here. 
So I'm gonna take the foam roller in front of the body. I'm gonna dorsal flex my feet to pull your toes back towards your shin. Feel connected to the earth here. And I'm gonna take the foam roller and I'm gonna roll it all the way forward. Now, some people don't have the flexibility to go that far where the foam roller fits. It happens a lot. So I would recommend your student to take the foam roller this way and push it forward. So it's whatever works for them. Always give options because not everybody is the same. So we'll take a nice inhale here. Exhale, we'll go ahead and use that foam roller and press it all the way away. Feeling this stretch on the insides of our thighs or adductors. Nice deep stretch. Continue to breathe into the back lungs. And then nice and slow, we'll go ahead and roll all the way back up. So again, you could have took that same movement here, going like that. So again, there was just a couple ways of using it as a prop. So um, now, go ahead and take that foot and roll behind you, grab the backs of your knees, and then let's just do a little knee wiper here, side to side. So let's take them feet in and underneath of us here and we'll come back up to our knees. So the first area of our six today that I'm gonna be demonstrating is finding, and I'll actually face this way, finding the quad muscles, the tops of the thighs. So from here what I'm gonna do and I recommend is to always take the foam roller towards the center of your mat. Then you're gonna come, or maybe actually even a little bit behind the center towards you. Allow connection with the foam roller and the top of the thighs. And then you're gonna take your time as you come forward and you're gonna create a tripod. So before I even come down, I want you to interlace, this is what you're gonna do, you're gonna interlace your fingers and you're gonna come into this tripod. Make sure that you try to keep the majority of the movements, the elbow and the shoulder in proper alignment, okay? So I'm gonna lean forward onto that foam roller, I'm gonna interlace my fingers and I'm gonna find that tripod. Pull the elbows back a little bit in line with the shoulders. Before we foam roll, we still have to find alignment. So I want us to squeeze our core, lift our core. Shoulders are gonna go down and back. Eyes are gonna gaze slightly forward and down. And we're gonna find this beautiful flowing motion here, up and down, on our quads. Take the breath, maybe inhale and exhale. Now a couple ways to intense, intensify this. So you can set your phone timer, for example, and roll for a minute. That's what I recommend to start with. But if you wanna change this and go a little deeper, drawing the toes inward, so internal rotation and external, turning the toes outward, change this a lot. So manipulating the foot here really can intensify this movement. Keep breathing. So start off with just the legs, squeezing the belly, allowing the whole body to be a part of this. Not just thinking about the legs. Think about the arms, the head. Let everything feel good. Now let's say the, you're, not, you're feeling it, but you want to go a little bit deeper. And you'll know where you need to go. You're going to bend one knee and we're gonna roll from here. So this way, definitely intense it, it makes it harder and more challenging for me. And maybe not stay there for a full minute in this, maybe just stay here for five deep breaths. Remember changing the foot position too, changes it. And if you chose to do that, let's take the other side. Squeeze the belly, find good alignment, length a little bit more from the back of the neck, and let's go for it. Remember not to roll on the knee right before it. Now let's talk about trigger points. So we talked about that 
where you're finding this little sensitive spot. So right mid thigh there, I have a little bit extra sensitive area. I'm going to stay there and take a little tiny roll, breathe. If you can't breathe through it, you might be going a little too deep. So listen to your body. All right, now to come out of this, the easiest way to come back is to kind of walk your arms back, roll the foam roller up to your hips until your knees come down to the mat. Find your hands underneath your armpits and then you'll come up nice and slow. So now what I like to do is after I do that, you can take a couple movements here. You can kind of just stretch out the backs of the legs here and the fronts of the leg. And then I always like to find my rebound in between. So I'll take a nice inhale here and then go ahead and find maybe just a little child's pose to let everything go. All right, so moving on. So we talked about the um, quadriceps and it is the foreheaded muscle of the femur, if you didn't know that. Next up, we have our glutes. So our glutes, the biggest muscle in our body. So let's talk about the glutes. So we talked a little bit about the piriformis muscle and how it's an area that we really want to start incorporating more. So how to come in and out of this. So first thing I want to talk about is again, come more to the center of your mat. I'm going to take one hand over onto the mat. I'm going to kind of come in sideways and then slowly bring my feet down to the earth and I'm going to come around. Now, you can start here with your hands. Let's talk about our hands. So we have extension and flexion in our forearms and our wrists and the way that it feels. So we don't want to put too much pressure. So fingertips can come behind us here and we kind of come up to our fingertips so we're not pressing down like almost that cat call. So be mindful there. Um, bend your elbows a little bit so we don't want to hyperextend or lock out. And that feels great for my shoulders. I'm not feeling any discomfort there in my wrist or my shoulders. Both feet are on the mat. And I'm foam rolling. Working on my glutes. And you might say, this is enough for me today. Again, listening to your body. If you want to go a little deeper, what you're going to do now is you're going to take a leg and you're going to cross it over and you're going to come into figure four. So from this movement, what I like to do is my right leg is crossed over my left thigh. I'm going to take my left arm and I'm going to bring it up to my right knee. And I'm going to come a little bit to a diagonal or an angle here. And I'm going to roll here. Now, as I do this, this is going to focus more on that piriformis muscle. So I'm going to breathe here. Get all the way into the glute. Find that ujjayi breath. And as you're going through the discomfort, remind yourself how good it is for the soft skeleton in your body, moving around that beautiful, complex spider web connective tissue on the inside. And as we think about the outside, it gets rid of cellulite too. So keep that rolling up. Next up, we'll go ahead and take that hand back down around and we'll uncross the leg. Now we'll go ahead and do the other side. So we'll take a nice inhalation as we bring that foot up. And then that back right arm is going to touch and meet that left knee. And we're going to foam roll here. So a fun fact with the glutes, it really is the biggest muscle in our body. So we want to make sure because it's the biggest muscle in the body that we really move around on this foam roller. Finding that trigger spot, little tightness here. I'm going to stay on it. Take little movements and breathe. One thing that you'll notice is that you take that hand around and uncross. I'm going to come back to both. Is that 
you warm up the body and you actually start to sweat. So it's amazing. We'll start foam rolling and I'll have students say, man, I'm already hot. I already feel like I've been working out. You are. So it's not uncommon to create heat here in the body and you'll start to feel it. All right, so to come out of that, there's a couple different ways you can come out of this posture. I kind of take my hands a little bit wider. I slowly slide back until my glutes touch. And then I'm gonna bring the foam roller kind of in between. So now if I, if I roll the glutes out first and I come back, this is gonna set me up for the next two areas um, that we're gonna foam roll. So the next area that I'm gonna foam roll is gonna be my hamstrings. So up on the screen, we had our quads, then we had our hamstring, our, our glutes, and let's see what's up next. Yep, yep, it's our hamstrings. So our hamstrings are um, always tight. Who can say that at home with me? Um, mine have gotten so much better from foam rolling, um, so I, I don't typically have tight hamstrings, but as soon as I start to notice that they're starting to get tight again is when I bring the foam roller up. So a couple different ways to work on our hamstrings. So there's different variations. Um, so do which one feels best for you. First one is hands are gonna come behind us, really squeeze your glutes, and we're gonna lift our entire body up. And we're gonna roll both legs at once. So this is also going to create core strength here, upper body strength. So it's important to you know really find good alignment, manipulate, Relating the feet, change it a lot, bringing them toes inward or outward, really getting into them hamstrings. And this can be pretty intense staying up on your body like this the whole time. It can be challenging. So if it's too much, what I recommend is bending one knee and just foam rolling one leg at a time. So now you're um, in a tripod, you have, you have weight, you can put some weight onto this um, foot here to help glide you around. And again, maybe turn a little bit more inward, centralize a little bit outward. Go back to that Ujjayi breath. Good job, everybody. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch legs. So I'm gonna slowly come down and then I'm gonna take the other side. So I'm gonna bend my left knee and I'm gonna foam roll out my right hamstring. You might notice that one side feels a little harder than the other, a little tighter. My right hamstring feels good. Hardly any sens sensitivity. That left one I definitely had some more um, build up, maybe adhesions or scar tissue or tightness in the muscle. And then we'll slowly take our time to come all the way down. So I'm gonna pause still and talk about the hamstring. Right after about the hamstrings is where I notice that even if you don't have any issues going on in your, fi your fingers or your hands or your wrists or your elbows and shoulders, this is where I pause and I take some time to concentrate on that area of the body. So for example, you can come into any easy seat that you want, but I'm gonna work on flexion and extension for the wrists. So working on the forearm here and then underneath and all of the fingers as well. And then you can just incorporate the breath here, taking a nice inhale and then exhale. So I always like to say the wrists and the hands and the feet and the ankles are this extension of our body. And being a trained dancer, our fingers and our hands and our feet and our toes are so important. So it's crucial to find isolations. So this really helps me in between because I'll notice a little bit of, like, they get sore and they get tired from holding my weight up. So if that was, um, if that happens to you, and even if it doesn't, I really, I always pause in between. I take my figure eights, maybe even fan the fingers, maybe even just move the arms here, bringing in some more availability. All right, 
So now we're going to move on and we're gonna go into our next muscle out of our six is going to be our calf muscle. So from here, we're gonna go into our calf. So this gentleman here in our picture here is showing a great example. And we wanna make sure that um, we don't roll behind or on the joints. So we need to be very mindful here that we're not going behind the joint. So next up is the calf. So actually my hands and wrists feel better. I'm ready to, ready to come on up. So this one's a little stronger because I'm up with two hands. But if you notice that I'm um, with two legs, this gentleman over here, he has one leg crossed over top of the other. So that's pretty intense. Um, it feels okay to me tonight, um, but I will say that if you're new to foam rolling, maybe not the best way. Um, the other way it's a little bit different is actually just taking the foam roller here and moving against it. Now you'll kind of you'll notice it'll come it'll come sometimes too close. And you kind of move it around, um, but this works really well too. You can also take um, one leg here. So again, it's all about just kind of fooling around and doing what's best for you. Another, um, another great way here would be to come up to your knuckles as a, um, a different approach than using your hands. So really rolling out these calf muscles. All right, moving on. So I'm gonna slide that out. And now I'm gonna come up to my knees. So the next one is that IT band. So remember we talked about that can be the most intense or the one where I start to see my students' faces, um, the expression change, so that IT band. So this one I wanna make sure again, I come central to a little more off to the side of the mat because I'm gonna lie all the way down. So I'm gonna make sure that foam roller's tight to the leg here, mid thigh. I'm gonna lean all the way over and I'm gonna come down onto my forearm. So the coming down onto the forearms is another modification. So if that feels better for you, feel free to do that or maybe even halfway through. Then from here, you can actually lift both legs, very intense to be able to foam roll there if you haven't done it for a while. I recommend taking this top leg, so you're gonna lift your top leg, you're gonna cross it in front, and you're gonna allow the front leg here to help move and glide. And again, you can come down onto that forearm. Whatever feels best for you. This is definitely intense for me right now, so I'm gonna breathe through it with you. And really find that full glide and movement working on that fascial release. Creating more flexibility in the body. Flexible body creates a flexible mind. Creating more beautiful space with me. And then from here to come out of this posture, the bottom leg slides back and bends in first. Then nice and slow, you'll walk your hands back. Top leg here comes right back to your knees and then you'll slide it around. In between, if you were on your wrist, I like to pause, I like to reground and center and kind of just feel what that feels like. We'll take a nice inhale. Eyes gaze up. Exhale, take that chin into your heart center. Big stretch again, inhale. And exhale. All right, let's go into the other side. So, so from here, same thing. We're gonna take that um, hand and reach it over, down onto our side here. Foam roller is gonna hit right in the middle of the leg and then nice and easy and steady I go, I'm gonna extend both of my legs out. I'm gonna take that top leg, and I'm gonna go ahead and cross it 
and bring it right in front. So that leg needs to be in front. And then from here, I'm gonna home roll. Getting yourself stable as you can. Breathe with me. Start to create that heat in my body. Creating that heat help heat helps to Move that fascia around as well. And then I'm going to bottom in that bottom leg. Take that top knee, bring it back nice and slow. We're going to push ourselves up. Taking the foam roll to the side. Let's take two more deep breaths here. Inhale. And exhale. One more. Inhale, inhale through the nose. Big exhale out through the mouth. And then I like to tap the body. So I'm actually going to tap my leg. This works for fascia as well. So sometimes I'll incorporate tapping, the hamstrings, the glutes, all the areas that we just foam rolled. So next up, my last one is I'm going to work on the shoulders and the traps. So if you have long hair, um, make sure you tuck your hair away or bun or whatever you need to do um, to move that. Or maybe you don't have long hair and you don't have to worry about it. But either way, ladies, if you do have long hair, it's no fun to foam roll arm the hip. So with experience comes wisdom. So that one I'm giving you a heads up with. So from here, what I would like you to do is we're actually going to bend our knees and we're going to lean back and we're going to connect to the foam roller. Before we get into our traps, I want to talk about how we're going to do this. And the first thing I want you to do is you're going to interlace your fingers and you're going to take your head into your hands. Now, the tip here is to really not hold the head up. Allow the head to just rest into your hands. Make sure your, um, your knees are shining upwards. They're not popping out to the side. And we're going to use our glute muscles. So again, we're not just focusing on the shoulders and the foam roller the entire body. Take a nice inhale. Actively press down to your feet. Let your head rest into your hands. And we'll take some glides here as we foam roll the traps. So again, if you remember what I said earlier, I love rolling out this area because I do get tight in here. And maybe you're a college student and have a backpack on all the whole time, or maybe you're in full reflection, always looking down at that computer or phone. So this really opens up. And I even feel stronger and more vibrant in my chest and in my mind when I foam roll out my upper shoulders and my traps. So make sure you're really pressing down with your feet and using your whole body to help you through this movement. Take a few more breaths. And then to come down nice and slow, we'll go ahead and lower our glutes. Good. We release one hand, keep one hand to support behind your head, one hand, extend one leg out, maybe a little roll to the side if that's an easier way to come up. So after I roll out that six areas. I like to come and find myself to come all the way down onto my mat, or you could take a couple other stretches as I showed you before that you can use um, with the foam roller as a prop. So from here, I'm just gonna kind of snuggle my shoulders in and underneath of me, and then when I come into that shavasana, that final resting pose of the day. And I'm just going to reconnect to my breath, feeling the mat below me, the ground supporting me, and just observe how my body feels. We 
returning back to that three part, calming down the breath. stillness. Are you proud of yourself for educating yourself, for taking time for you? Self-care is the best health. Feel our feet and our ankles and our calves, our legs and our hamstrings and our glutes. All the love and attention we gave to our legs, and our pelvis and our hips, and our tummy and our arms, and our chest in our spine, in our back, in our shoulders, our fingers, our neck, our head, our face, our whole body, our whole body, relaxing, coming into stand. nice and still. We'll start to bring awareness back to the physical body. We're deepening the breath, we're wiggling the fingers and the toes. Maybe giving yourself a little hug here between your shoulder blades. And bending your knees, maybe even bringing a little bit of movement into a spiral twist here in your supine position, inhaling the knees up with me, and exhaling the knees over. And then we'll take the knees over to the side and we'll roll all the way over to our side in fetal position, allowing the head to float into the arm as a pillow. And then extending the top leg and taking your hand and pressing down into the earth or towards your mat to come up to a nice seated position. All right, well, I just wanted to thank you guys for joining me. And um, I just want to really wish you guys happy foam rolling. So I hope you learned um, a lot of different ways to incorporate the foam roller into your practice. And I thank you guys so much for joining in and tuning in. I end each class with a bow. So we're gonna go ahead and take our arms and we're gonna inhale them all the way up, coming into that Anjali Mudra. Let's all seal our practice together tonight as we take our hands and we're gonna place them onto our foreheads, reminding ourselves to be positive and to think positive. Hands to the mouth to speak kind words to yourself and to speak kind words to others. And hands to your heart center to love yourself, to love others, and to love our planet. We all bow our heads and we say, Namaste. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.